Hello everyone, it's the Viper here and welcome to the first look at the Armenians, one of the new civilizations introduced to Age of Empires 2 with the new DLC, the Mountain Royals, set to release October 31st. The Armenians are an infantry and naval civilization that play out quite differently compared to what you're used to. You'll notice right away that the first listing in the tech tree states that the mule carts cost minus 25%. You might think they have mules pulling their trade carts, but that is not the case. The mule cart works as a mobile drop site where you can drop off wood, stone, gold and hunted food. You won't be able to deposit food from sheep, berries, fish or farms to the mule cart. The mule cart has to be built by villagers and it will automatically move to the closest resource that you can collect upon completion, except hunt. They cost 15 food and 75 wood for the Armenians, so the base cost is 20 food and 100 wood. It has 300 HP, 1 melee armor and 2 pierce armor, and in order to increase its armor and hit points, you have to research masonry in the university. It also serves as one of your buildings required to advance to the feudal age. You can build mills and docks like any other civilization, but won't have access to a mining camp or a lumber camp. The lumber and mining upgrades are researched from the mule cart and are 25% more effective for the Armenians, which is a solid economy bonus in itself. With all economy researches, they will actually be the civilization with the best wood income in the game. As an infantry civilization, it's only natural that the Armenians' barracks shine, and boy does it shine. Barracks units, except them in the arms, are all available one age earlier. This means that you can have long swords and pikemen in the feudal age, and two-handed swordsmen, champions and halberdiers in the castle age. They also have all the other infantry upgrades from the barracks, but naturally no access to eagle warriors. As expected, they also have all the blacksmith upgrades required for infantry. Their archery range is not very impressive at first glance, but as they have all the blacksmith upgrades for the range units, their arbalists can do a decent job in some situations despite the lack of thumb ring. And elite skirmish can always be useful as long as you have bracer. Safe to say, you probably want to avoid the cav archers. The stable is also quite lackluster. Whilst you do have knights, light cavalry, husbandry and bloodlines, you won't scale well as the game goes on. Without plate barding armor, hussa or paladin, your options are pretty much exhausted past the castle age. We find the Armenians with below average siege options as well. You're capped, pun intended, at capped rams, onagers and heavy scorpions. As every other civ, you do have siege towers, but without siege engineers or bombard cannons, it's quite a disappointing siege workshop. You do, however, find another bright spot for the Armenians in the dock. Instead of the cannon gallons, you do get access to the fairly new Dromon, and the lack of fast fire ships is heavily compensated by the galley line firing two projectiles. Okay, the second projectile doesn't do that much damage, so it's not as broken as it sounds. And they also have a unique tech from the castle that will make Tato very, very excited. Cilician fleet comes in at 350 wood and 300 gold and increases the demolition ship's blast radius by 33%. On top of that, it also gives the galley line and Dromon's plus one range. This will be the first time we see galleons with more than 10 range. Combine that with the second projectile and we might be looking at the best ships in the game right now. They also do have all the other upgrades in the dock. The noticeable absence from the university is architecture, dimension siege engineers and no keep nor arrow slits. Despite no bomber cannons, you do actually have access to bomber towers. In the castle we find Armenians have all possible technologies and a completely new unique unit in the compo composite, 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 composite bowman is the proper pronunciation. Okay. In the castle we find Armenians have all possible technologies and a completely new unique unit in the composite bowman. We're talking about an archer unit that ignores armor here. That does sound very scary, but if we dive into it, I don't think it's that broken. The cost of 35 wood and 45 gold is comparable to most other unique range units in the game, and they enter the game with 40 HP and only 4 attack and 4 range. With only 1 melee armor and 0 pierce armor and fairly low HP, it makes them very vulnerable, and due to the low range they already have to get somewhat close to engage. The elite upgrade is quite cheap at 600 wood and 500 gold, but it only gives 5 more HP and 1 more melee armor. The Armenians don't have thumb ring, but the composite bowman does have a base accuracy of 100. So they already have one of the thumb ring benefits, but the faster firing definitely would have helped. They move as fast as regular archers and have plus 2 bonus damage against the spearman line. They do strike me as a unit that packs a punch, but at the same time is extremely vulnerable and quite easily countered by ranged units due to them having no base ranged armor. Cilician Fleet is the cast stage unique tech we talked about earlier during the dock overview. The Imperial Age one is called Ferritors, which gives infantry, except the Spearman line, 30 extra HP and gives Warrior Priests, which we'll talk about very soon, plus 100% heal speed. 
It costs 550 food and 400 gold and will give champions as much as 100 HP. Alongside the Georgians, the Armenians will not have the usual monastery, but rather a fortified church. It costs 200 wood and has more HP and armor compared to a normal monastery. However, you'll notice that the fortified church also has an attack. With 5 damage and 6 range, it is a monastery that also functions like a tower, with single arrows fired. You can garrison villagers and funnel enough relics in order to provide additional projectiles. Monks can also garrison for safety, but won't be adding more projectiles. The attack increases with the range attack upgrades from the blacksmith and chemistry, but you cannot increase the range past 6. As a save bonus, the first fortified church will spawn with a free relic garrisoned. The Armenians do have access to every single monk tech in the game, so in my eyes they're also a monk civilization. The fortified church is also where we'll find another unique unit, the warrior priest. This is an infantry unit that can also heal friendly troops. It costs 30 food and 60 gold, has 80 HP with 11 attack and 1 melee and pierce armor. It starts off slower than the militia line, but as they benefit from both infantry and monk upgrades, once you have squires and fervor, they'll be faster. As it also benefits from the HP boost of Ferritors and Sanctity, the unit can end up on 125 HP, which is a lot for an infantry unit. With full upgrades, it has 2 less attack than a champion, but the same armor and 25 more HP. But as it can also heal friendly troops, it might be a valuable addition to the army. Initially, the healing is slower than a regular monk, but once Ferritors is researched, it outheals a monk by quite a lot. Note that warrior priests cannot convert enemy units, but they can pick up relics. During a fight they will engage enemy units as normal infantry would, and they do not have a hotkey to heal. So the only way to manually heal during a fight is to select your warrior priest and right click on the unit that you want to heal. Another trick can be to select warrior priest and put them on staying ground, where they will then be healing allied units within range, and they won't be engaging enemy troops as long as there are no enemy units adjacent. Certainly a unit that will be very fun to explore and figure out how to properly use in the game. The Armenian's team bonus gives infantry plus 2 line of sight and carries on the theme of this being an infantry civilization. At last, they do have all the economy upgrades and guilds except stone shaft mining and crop rotation. In my opinion, this civilization has a very unique and interesting way of playing. The economy management is going to take some getting used to as you'll have the mobile drop-off points, but it will also make your economy management quite flexible and easy to transition. Going out for longer distance hunts seems more feasible as you can easily send the villagers and the mule back home or work on another resource in the area after a hunt. With the mining and lumber upgrades being more efficient, they're also getting a heavy boost in their economy on top of that. I could see them struggling a bit with their tech tree, especially in 1v1s. They're heavily encouraged to go for infantry play in the early age, as you'll have champions and halberdiers in Castle Age for example, who probably want to mix in some warrior priests and monks maybe, and then some skirms to counter range units at times. I can also see people aiming for the unique unit, as with good micro they can be very deadly, but I also see them as a bit of a high risk, high reward kind of thing, and they probably work the best if they have a meat shield in front of them. The Armenians can also play regular knights and crossbows, but those types of troops will not scale well as the game goes on. And I do think their playstyle is going to be quite similar for both 1-1 and team games, but I also think they will struggle quite a lot on more close maps such as Black Forest, because their siege options just are lackluster. Despite this, the naval prowess of the Civ is undeniable. Galleons with double projectiles and 11 range, Dromons with 13 range, heavy demolition ships with 33% bigger blast radius. Combine this with a potentially more flexible land economy and the best wood economy in the game, we may have a new king of water at our hands. Those are my thoughts on the Armenians. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the civilization. Do you think it's going to be a top civ, maybe on the bottom half? And make sure to let me know why. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed, subscribe for more and also check out my review of the Georgians and the newly updated Persians. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.